A few days ago, I did a video breaking down the various shuttles of the Star Wars universe and trying to rank them in order of how sick they were. And a lot of you asked, hey, Eck, where's the Sentinel? Well, what you rapscallions probably don't know is that that video actually stemmed from a research session I was doing into the Sentinel. And I came to the undeniable conclusion. The Sentinel is simply too good to be compared to other shuttles. And I mean, really, that's probably not surprising considering this thing really pushed the definition of what I was requiring for something to be a shuttle for the purpose of the video. It's almost twice as long, for example, as the Lambda. It's a much, much larger vessel, and it packs an absolute punch. The Sentinel was actually one of my favorite ships growing up, despite the fact that it doesn't actually appear in any of the Star Wars movies. Well, sort of. It's briefly in a special edition of A New Hope, but what I knew it from was Shadows of the Empire, my first ever Star Wars game, and one of my favorites. It also appears prominently in Star Wars Rogue Squadron, also played by me at least on the N64. After its introduction in Shadows of the Empire, the Sentinel was actually used pretty prominently in Star Wars Legends and has even found its way to the screen in shows like Star Wars Rebels in the new canon. If you watched my video ranking the shuttles of the Star Wars universe, you have a good base of understanding for what the Sentinel is, even if you don't know it. It's essentially a larger, beefed up, more impressive version of the Lambda, which by the way, I ranked as the greatest shuttle in Star Wars history. We should still watch the video even with that spoiler. It's pretty clear right away where I was going to rank it. I'll get into some of the specific details about how it's better in a minute, but issue 39 of Star Wars Fact File actually has a really nice breakdown of the Sentinel, which I want to first cover. Unsurprisingly, the Sentinel evolved from the Lambda class shuttle. Interestingly, the article sort of describes a divergent evolution. The Lambda evolved both into the XG-1 assault gunboat and the Sentinel both which emphasized and improved on different aspects of the initial design. The benefits were obvious. Not only were you starting from a working, effective ship, but when it came to manufacturing the Sentinel, many of the components were already ready. The Sentinel was also a Sinar ship and was also produced by Cygnus. That further eased production as many of the sort of stock parts could be used in new Sentinels. The lander maintained the Lambda's purpose, i.e. transporting VIPs, but also focused more heavily heavily on both deploying troops into hot zones and also serving as an air support weaponry platform, something we didn't see the Lambda purpose built for. It was much more effective as a lander given its size, not only longer than the Sentinel, but we can see the vastly expanded cargo bay. The ship could drop six squads of stormtroopers, but also support vehicles and more. It also had additional what they called assault ramps on either side of the craft so that troops and equipment could debark more quickly. But that's the landing bit. Let's talk about the new role I said the Sentinel took on, air support. The ship was meant to be operated with a pilot, a co-pilot, and at least three gunners. The Sentinel then had more than enough weapons not only to defend itself and its troops, but also operate independently to take out enemy targets. The Sentinel used a pair of forward-facing concussion missile launchers and had a retractable ion cannon, making it quite effective against even shielded vehicles or installations. Then what the fact file calls 10 other energy weapons concealed behind retractable hull plates. This includes four guns on each side of the cargo bay, then a pair of turreted repeating blasters under the command module. I imagine this as sort of a heavier version of what we see the Millennium Falcon using. However, the Sentinel does have one, I think, kind of major weakness compared to the Lambda, and that's a lack of a rear-facing gun. This is pretty surprising in a bit of an oversight, especially where the vehicle now has even more of a sort of blind spot behind the cockpit. The new essential guide to vehicles and Vessels does a good job of really laying out how the Sentinel made major improvements to what the Lambda offered. For example, it says straight up that the Sentinel had 25% heavier armor than the Lambda. It also has four shield projectors. We don't know how many the Lambda had, only that it had multiple generators, but additional projectors would more easily allow the Sentinel to manipulate shields and would provide redundant levels of shielding. So a very, very survivable ship is now even more hard to kill. And if you've played Star Wars Rogue Squadron, specifically the battle against Moff Seerden, which I incorrectly stated in my past video he was using a Lambda in, you'd know just how hard these things can be to take out. Another upgraded feature really highlighted by the new Essential Guide to Vehicles and Vessels is the Sentinel's improved and state-of-the-art communications array. This allowed the ship to, and I quote, contact any Imperial vessel within a given system, and it worked in conjunction with the ship's sensor suite, which had a variety of advanced sensing and targeting 
braking systems. You'd think this extra size would really slow the ship down, but that appears not to have been the case. The Sentinel is powered by advanced Cygnus engines, and is by some accounts not only as fast as the Lambda, but perhaps even faster, while also still sporting a Class 1 hyperdrive. So yeah, that's all I got on this thing, but obviously the Sentinel was no joke, and you can see why I chose not to include it in my comparison video. This thing would have ran away with it. However, that's all I've got for you guys today. I'm about to be away for a week. I'm going to try to get an upload scheduled for then, but when I come back, you guys have something to look forward to, because I'm going to return the Ask X segment to my videos. So if there's a short question you'd like to see answered at the end of one of my videos, leave it in the comments and make sure you include hashtag Ask X. That is how I find the comments when I go through in the YouTube Studio app. But until next time, be safe, have a good one, and may the force be with you.